Hi, it looks like the sentiment has changed. If you're part of the Telegram group, you already know this, but in case you are not, here's something very interesting that recently happened. Ethereum has crossed two very significant moving averages. The 39-day moving average here in dark blue and the 23-day moving average here in light blue. And since we came below those moving averages in the middle of May, we haven't seen such a clear breakout. So we basically went down 37% since those two signals. And now the market looks bullish again, at least in the short term. If we are going up long term from here, of course, nobody knows. But statistically speaking, this is a very positive sign, at least for the short term. Now, why do I say statistically speaking, in case you're not yet following the channel that closely, this will be of interest to you. There's this very simple strategy, right? To be in the market whenever the price of an asset is above the moving average. So in this case here in pink, we see a moving average and here in white, we see the asset. So we are in the market whenever the price is above a moving average. And then we exit the market, we sell everything whenever the price goes below the moving average. So what you see here in white is the asset. What you see in pink is the moving average. And what you see in gray is the portfolio line. So that's basically the line that we get when we trade according to that strategy. And what you're seeing over here is the Ethereum chart with a 23 day moving average and a portfolio line resulting from that trading strategy. Now in this simulation, there is no trading fees, no bid ask spread, no slippage, nothing like this is accounted for in this simulation. But the idea behind this is basically to find out if we use moving averages for trading, which ones work the best for Ethereum. And so the 23 day moving average and here the 39 day moving average, I'm not toggling between those two charts. Those two work the best historically speaking for Ethereum. So here we've got the results in a table format. Here we get those moving averages. Here we get the return per annum. There's also a column for the maximum drawdown from the top of the portfolio line to the bottom. So the 23 day moving average, it works great. The 39 day moving average as well. And what I also find very interesting about this chart is if we compare this with buying and holding, which would have given us 56% and the maximum drawdown from top to bottom of 90%. If we compare those numbers with the trading strategies, we can see that it almost does not really matter what moving average you take, you are going to outperform if you follow the trend somewhat. So if you are long whenever the prices tend to rise and when you are short whenever the prices tend to fall. And the moving average duration is just kind of an optimization of that strategy, but it seems to work no matter what moving average you take except for the very short term, the two day moving average. So on the very short time frame, there seems to be something like mean reversion happening. So when you have a very quick crash or a quick ascent, people still reference this new price to the price that was yesterday. So when the price yesterday fell, it seems like a good buying opportunity. When it rose, it seems to be rather expensive short term. And so that's how I explain that the two day moving average doesn't really work that well. I mean, what does two day moving average mean, right? It just means yesterday was falling or yesterday was rising. And when it was rising, you buy when it was falling, you sell. But once you go beyond that time frame, already on the three day moving average, we match buying and holding with reduced risk. And the higher we go, the better we are up to the 23 day moving average. Now, what's also very interesting about this is not just that we outperform with almost every moving average, but that we are actually less in the market, right? Think about it. You are in the market maybe only half of the time and still you can make the same amount or more amount of money. So that means the moving average is clearly working for Ethereum to distill when positive times are on the horizon. There seems to be really some kind of predictive power. During this time when you're not invested, you basically can use this money in something else, right? If you've got a profitable trading strategy in some other asset that's maybe lowly correlated to Ethereum, you can use that money to get some return with that other trading strategy. So you're not all the time invested and still you outperform or for very short time frames, you perform on a similar scale. So that's great, right? If you calculate the share ratio, meaning what's your return compared to what's your volatility, you are very likely to get a positive value for almost everything except the two day moving average. 
This here isn't the volatility, this is the maximum drawdown from top to bottom. But you're very likely to see also similar results for the volatility when you have a lot of time on the sidelines where you're not invested at all, right? If you have a portfolio that goes sideways from time to time, your overall volatility decreases. So yeah, I like this very, very much. Not only the return is the highest for those two moving averages, if you also look at the maximum drawdown, it also is the lowest. It's only quote unquote at minus 47% from top to bottom. If you're buying and holding Ethereum, you go down 90%, but if you're trading, you only go down 47%. So you're mitigating your risk. Now, practically speaking, in theory, you could use this to even lever up your position, right? So if you wanted to be as risky as buying and holding Ethereum and you're fine with losing 90%, then you could, in theory, not just buy Ethereum, when it goes up, but you could buy it, say, with a leverage of two and then be exposed to a similar volatility, but boost up the return even more. Now, I'm not advocating for this simply because there's also a lot of manipulation happening in the markets and also because people tend to not stick with a leverage of two and then you're just waiting for being knocked out to lose completely all your money. And what you also got to consider if you use leverage is the internal financing costs embedded in the leverage. So very often when you just take leverage off the shelf of a crypto platform, you might be paying 10% or more on your leverage. And that does not have to be necessarily profitable anymore. Obviously, when you make such returns, 10% doesn't really matter. But think about it, there's probably cheaper ways to get leverage. Even if you take a personal loan, you're not even at risk to be knocked out. That's probably still a cheaper way to get leverage and if your income stream is very stable you know rather take like two three months of personal loan to buy some ethereum than taking the leverage products of those gambling exchanges so yeah right now looks very positive obviously this strategy is not fail proof either right so in the past we did have those breakouts where we then fell below again and we go above and so this does not have to work. The signals are not perfect, but it's at least the best signals, historically speaking, that we can generate with moving averages for Ethereum. So it kind of feels like a funny time to buy, right? Right now, everybody is still very bearish. It looks like a fake out. I mean, this increase came out of the blue very quickly. If we zoom in a little bit, let's maybe have a look at what time those increases happened. So this is also something very interesting to look at. What's the trading volume as per time of the day? Because if we have market manipulation, if we have crashes, usually those happen at around 4 a.m. UTC time because that's when the trading volume is very low and that's where you can manipulate the market most easily because the order books are thin and so your sell orders, they move the price more. Both your sell and your buy orders would move the price most at 4 a.m. UTC time and they would move it less at say 2 or 3 a.m. UTC time. So maybe let's just look at when those increases happened this time. So we got again here a big increase at 4 a.m. So this looks very much like somebody intentionally wanted to push the price up. Also very interesting that the trading volume here suddenly spiked, which is atypical for this time of the day. Usually we are very quiet at this time, but somebody wanted to move the price. And so this happened at 4 a.m. Then let's continue where we have other major increases. Here we've got one. So this is... 7 to 11 p.m. And that's also a comparatively low trading volume time of the day. And in this case, we did have pretty high trading volume. So it definitely looks like this kind of rise was not triggered by random retail. This kind of rise was definitely intended by some large whales that try to move the market and that have been successful at moving the market. Now, nobody really knows if this will really last, if this is a good buying signal. Historically, it worked, but who knows? If we, for example, look at the Bitcoin regression chart, which I like to use for long-term cycles, we can see, let's zoom in over here, that we are not yet at the bottom, right? So we do have room to fall here to 20K potentially. But if we see institutions now buying, we are likely to get also less volatility, right? Institutions, they are less active in trading. They're just buying and holding to diversify their portfolio to get returns that are not correlated to the rest of 
say, the stock market or the property market. And so they buy and hold. And so, so the big drop that we got in 2018 doesn't have to repeat itself right now. Nobody really knows. We don't have to come down to the 20K. It's just one possibility that you need to be prepared for. But in case it doesn't happen, then now might be the time to get into the market. If you found this video useful, please give this a like. YouTube will then share the video to a new audience. If you're not yet subscribed, click subscribe now because I publish videos two to three times every week. And last but not least, if you're looking for a community of like-minded people, a place completely free of spam, free of scammers, feel free to join our Telegram channel. It's called Bitcoin Strategy Channel on Telegram. Feel free to join there as well. See you next time. Bye-bye.